Uh, the um, development of sustainable fees is certainly a topic of interest that gain or draw a lot of attention, especially in recent years. Uh, if you look at the information that is being published out there, there's plenty of articles on the development of sustainable feeds, um, scientific paper, journal, choose just on that topic. And uh, I look at the um, uh, Aqua News, Aqua Feed uh, newsletter. Sorry, I was d distracted by the timer here. Uh, if you look at the last issue of the aquaculture uh, aquafi newsletter last that was released last week six out of the 12 uh, headline news were about sustainable feed so there's plenty of information out there and um just i was wondering what I, what else i could add to uh, this topic um but what i decided to do is to look at what we saw here over almost uh, a decade now uh, in terms of uh, new ingredients coming in the pipeline for aquaculture uh, specifically. And um, also at the end of the presentation make suggestions on what would be the next steps to progress further in that area. So uh, this slide here, I cannot see it moving on my screen, but I'm assuming you're, you're seeing uh, the, um, the global aquaculture or feed production in the world. Um, the International Feed Industry Federation estimated at 1.1 billion metric, uh, metric tons, the amount of feed produced in 2016. And uh, based on the FAO, this feed is responsible for 45% of the carbon footprint of livestock productions. So feed is a significant uh, factor affecting the sustainability of um, uh, livestock species, including fish. Most, uh, almost 50% of that feed goes to poultry uh, and nearly 30% is for swine, the remaining uh, feed goes to ruminant and 5% is considered uh, uh, the amount of feed for aqua, which is around 55 million metric tons of feed. So although this volume uh, is relatively small, the impact of aqua feed on sustainability is not negligible because uh, aqua feed use a highly processed ingredients um, and they are processed using uh, energy and water intensive technologies. Um, because uh, aquaculture is 5% of the global compound feed in the world, historically its impact on uh, grain and oil seed producers, for example, uh, to impose sustainable practice was relatively limited. But now we see more and more ingredients developed specifically for aquaculture and with the intent of uh, improving sustainability. So if we look back, uh, since the last two decades easily, most of the uh, novel ingredients have been coming from the different categories here on the screen uh, and are still coming from, from those uh, sectors. So. Uh, there are new ingredients coming from uh, grains and oil seeds, for example, camelina is relatively new. There are new crops that have been genetically engineered, like um, DHA, EPA rich canola oil. Um, there are ingredients also coming from uh, further processing of existing commodities. We see fermented soybean meal products uh, that have been enzymatically, enzymatically treated as well. Uh, and recently also single cell proteins coming mostly from bacteria and yeast uh, have gained a lot of traction. Algae, whether they are macro or micro algae, uh, stood also as alternative ingredients, especially to replace fish oil when it comes to marine microalgae. Uh, we see also new ingredients coming from invertebrates such as insects. Uh, so, Basically, the novel ingredients are coming from one of these categories here in aquaculture. Uh, and the first intent of 
these ingredients, like years ago, was to replace fish meal and fish oil. Um, and what we saw here is um, an example I'm giving of a study we did with insect products a few years ago and we published it. Uh, on the y-axis, we see uh, growth performance measured here uh, using the thermal unit growth coefficient as a function of fish meal replacement on the uh, x-axis. And what we notice is that beyond 30% replacement, uh, performance started to decrease. Now, don't get me wrong, a TGC of 0.260 uh, at 100% fish meal replacement is still good growth. Uh, the fish multiply their body weight by six uh, in three months. So it's still growing, but performance are um, affected when we uh, attempt at replacing fish meal beyond a certain level. What is more concerning is when it comes to FCR, and that's the second chart, uh, second chart here on the figure. Um, so the, as fish meal is being replaced, we notice an increase in the FCR value. So uh, the good thing is that there are less fish meal in the diet, but we need more feed to achieve the same biomass production. So it raises the question, what is more sustainable to minimize fish meal and use more feeds? Or is there a balance compromise that should be done here? Um, fish oil replacement is achieved more easily than fish meal replacement. And here's an example where we see performance on the y-axis, it's growth in blue uh, or FCR in orange. And regardless of how much fish oil uh, we replace, it doesn't really correlate. There's a weak relationship, if any, between performance and fish oil replacement. So that one is uh, easier. So one strategy that has been adopted uh, is to maintain a minimum level of protein or fish meal in the diet and uh, replace the other protein-rich ingredients with the test ingredient coming from grains and oil seeds or bacteria or yeast or other uh, uh, raw materials. And what we see is that performance on the y-axis expressed here as growth or FCR is poorly correlated with the inclusion level of the test ingredient as long as we maintain uh, fish meal uh, at a certain level around 10 or 15 percent for carnivorous species, for example. So um, the uh, so this uh, can be done to a certain extent. So uh, first people look at replacing fish meal. We saw there were some limitations there. Now it's supplying other alternatives to replace the protein rich ingredients other than fish meal. Um, but if we look at, at the consideration now for sustainability of the ingredients that are being offered on the market, it's quite easy to provide an ingredient that meets the nutrient requirements of the targeted species. It's another thing now to uh, contribute to sustainability of a feed. And we see more and more interest in developing sustainable feeds, as I mentioned in, earlier in this presentation. And um, if we look at the United Nations definition of sustainable development, is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Um, that's one thing. But it's important to measure sustainability. Uh, while most people agree on the definition, um, uh, it's another story when it comes to how to measure it. And uh, as a famous uh, manager said, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. So a few tools have been developed to measure uh, sustainability uh, in different area of the agri-food uh, sector, including aquaculture. And those tools here are, uh, here are the main tools, but there are others, of course. Uh, the first one is a life cycle assessment. It's basically a model that looked at all the envir environmental impacts of uh, the development of a product from the raw material to the finished product impacts on uh, for example, climate change, acidification, energy use, eutrophication, and so on. Life cycle ac assessment is a, our big models. They encompass the carbon footprint. Uh, uh, carbon footprint is basically the sum of all green 
greenhouse gases emission and expressed as a carbon dioxide equivalent. Uh, carbon sequestration is also another model that is being increasingly used. It's a mitigation measure to uh, uh, measure how much uh, atmospheric carbon dioxide is being captured and stored when it comes to production of uh, an ingredient. Circularity refer more to uh, economic uh, topics, but it's basically uh, uh, developing a system that uh, eliminates or minimizes waste and continue and the uh, uh, continual use of, of resources. One metric that we in aquaculture are most familiar with is uh, the fish in fish out ratio, uh, which is a measure of reliance on on fish meal and fish oil. And here is the equation for that metric. It's the inclusion level of fish meal and fish oil in a diet divided by the yield uh, of fish meal and fish oil from uh, marine fisheries and multiplied by FCR. Now, if we look at these variables in the equation, uh, I ran a sensitivity analysis and the parameter that can have the most impact on the improvement of fish in and fish out in a salmon diet that is typical with a typical formula that we find today on the market. Uh, the most sensitive variable is FCR. And FCR can be improved by uh, uh, through processing of the feed ingredients, through feed formulation, and uh, through breeding programs for species that have a high heritability value for this uh, trait. Um, but uh, if we look at fish in fish out ratio for the overall aquaculture, industry, uh, it is around 0.5, which 30 years ago was around uh, three. So it's a net improvement. And uh, I won't spend too much time here on how I calculate it. I know we're probably running out of time, but um, if I move to the next slide, what I want to demonstrate here is that fish in fish out is rather a narrow view of sustainability. We can um, for example, decrease the inclusion of fish oil and fish meal in a diet and replace it with ingredients that come from 20,000 kilometers away. So we may decrease fish in fish out ratio, but increase carbon footprint. Now, there's a compromise here that needs to be done, a measure that needs to be made in order to find out what's the best way to minimize impact. And in that slide here, um, what I want to demonstrate is that it's important to consider the whole supply chain when we make a feed ingredient, a feed, and, and give it to the, the fish farmers. We need to look at the raw materials, where it comes from, whether it's from uh, the ocean, uh, agricultural crops, or fermentation. Um, these ingredients need to be, these raw material needs to be transported uh, to a processing facility, and depending on the processing technologies, whether it's dry milling, wet milling, uh, solvent extraction, fermentation. Uh, there are energy involved in that, grinding, dry, drying, and so on. And those ingredients after that needs to be transported to feed processing facilities that use most of the time extrusion technologies that are demanding when it comes to um, uh, energy and water. And again, this has to be transported and will contribute carbon footprint to the end user, the fish farmers. And despite the fact that we can come up with the most sustainable feeds, if what's happening at the feed farm, the feed are not stored properly uh, or uh, fee feeding is not done properly and FCR is high, there's feed wastage, um, all our efforts are lost. So it's important to bring together all the key players. And here is a uh, a conceptual model is recently published by Albert Tekken and his uh, colleagues on um, how we can progress toward the development or the, the, of a sustainable food system. And it's by looking at all these factors, of course. Um, while most people agree on these factors, now how do we measure that? Which ones are most sensitive? Because Developing models to improve sustainability of feeds uh, can be very cumbersome. So many variables. Which one are have the most impact on sustainability? 
And uh, it's going to be important to identify that through sensitive analysis, for example, and, and work on those uh, variables. So to conclude, um, I think the take home message is uh, uh, it's important to bring together all the stakeholders, including NGOs, governmental agencies, researchers involved in the production of aquafeeds, starting from the raw material producers, processors, feed manufacturers, uh, and um, commit together to uh, develop sustainable feeds. And it's going to be important also to get alignment. How do we measure progress? Uh, as I said, we agree most of the time on definitions, but how, which metrics to choose and which factors we should be focusing on will require dialogue and development of models and, and a systematic approach to uh, identify and quantify um, the uh, factors we want to focus on. And um, discipline action also from all key, key players, stay focused on the objective will be uh, very important. So that's what it is in a nutshell. Um, sorry again for what happened at the beginning. I uh, just want to say thank you for your attention and I'll be more than happy to entertain questions you may have during the Q&A sessions. Thank you.